Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today I'm doing a mod. Uh, my daughter came to me about a week and a half or so and she asked me, she's like, do you, do you might have a spare keyboard that I could take for this thing at school to for a raffle or giveaway or something like that? And I was like, yeah, sure, I, I've got a few and I showed her some and this is an EUSU that I haven't modded. Uh, this is the K620, K6, yeah, K620. Um, it has the black, uh, black, they call it white, uh, backlight on the keys, and it also has um, LED side lights, which you can change the colors of, select the color, or do rainbow. Anyway, uh, she came to me last night, and, oh, well, after I showed her the keyboard, she picked this one. She was like, yeah, that one's, Cool looking I like the colors I'm like okay um, when do you need it she's like oh I don't know if I'm gonna do it I just wanted to know if you had one and I was like okay and I didn't hear anything else until last night she came to me and she's like hey can you have that keyboard ready Tuesday <laughs> and I was like that's the day after tomorrow she's like yeah thanks dad so <laughs> I, um, I I love my kids and that's fine I just got hit with this don't get me wrong this was on my list of boards that i planned to mod because i i enjoy it i modded quite a few of these uh for friends and they're spent with them uh and and they don't believe me when i tell them you know that i bought them most of the time for under twenty dollars uh the single color ones actually i think i bought as low as 11.99 on amazon when they go on sale so uh, they're like, no way, that's just, that's crazy, because this keyboard is so good. And I've modded quite a few. I mean, here's one example. I actually painted this one, but i got to redo the paint job on it. And this is actually for the LEDs here. But uh, I've got my own Franklin switch that I call Banana Split. I know it's not the other Banana Split, but it's a Splash Brothers uh, stem inside of uh, a Jazz Banana housing. So, I, I actually find this board a great base to mod and to learn with or from, as it really has a potential for all the mods, including um, this one, which I actually ported. Now, I didn't do the nicest of jobs on the back, but I hot glued and cut this down further as to where the cable is in this. So... I mean, I, I modified it and I've had fun. Now, today I'm not going to be doing the port because I just don't have the time. I had other things scheduled today, but uh, my kids come first, so I'm going to do this for them. Um, so, basically, um, I think I'm just going to take it apart. I'm going to put some filler on the inside. i got a couple of things I'm going to figure out what I'm going to choose. Uh, these comes, come with reds, but I think I'm going to replace them. Uh, and I'll see what I what I replace them with, but I think I'm going to leave the keycaps on, and just kind of make it a sleeper. Take off the logo, um, put PE foam above the PCB. Perhaps even put some separation or some sort of dampener between the uh, the plate and the PCB. Again, this is a plastic. Uh, I mean, the top cover is also the plate, and I like plastic. I prefer PC. Most of the times, there are some times that FR4, for some reason, just performs better in that combination. But if I have the choice, Palm is the first one that I get. So because it's, I mean, obviously they're not the same exact build and, you know, the plate isn't separate on here. But I've always been able to achieve a decent sound. So I took a stock sound test of this one, you know, before any mods, basically straight out of the box. So I'm going to go ahead and do some work on this EUSU K620 and kind of keep it a sleeper type model as I'm going to keep the keycaps on there, but I'm, uh, and I'm going to actually not decord it. So i take off the logo and see, let's see what it can do in a hurry kind of situation. But 
I think I think we can do something that will be noticeably better than what the stock sound test is. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm almost done taking these switches out now. In Otemu hot swap sockets, um, there are a couple different ways to pull these out. They are much tighter than, say, your kale hot swap sockets. Now, Otemu has already created their version of it, and they are replacing it with newer boards, especially uh, Red Dragon's latest revisions. Unfortunately, these will probably still be floating around in the market for the next year or two. So always be careful. If you do get these, you're going to be limited. Now, you can use, like, say, some gazoos in here, anything made by Otemu, and a lot of Akko switches. But you still, you actually run risk, more risk of actually damaging a switch than damaging um, the PCB and pulling, you know, or, or hurting the sockets. Though, I had one occasion with another Yusu board, the Z11, where one of the switches wouldn't come out. It was stuck, and I'm like, I know, because I pulled all the rest of them out, and I believe it was the two or the three on a 60%. And finally, I, <clears throat> I yanked, and it came out with the hot swap socket. So thankfully, I had some spare ones. I soldered one back in. Everything was good to go. But when it comes to removing, especially some that have been inserted at the factory um, there's two ways to go about it kind of figure out which one works best for you but always in both cases you want to make sure that you're grabbing the bottom side of it first then you want to slide the top part of the tool in there now one of the ways of doing it is just straight up and one swift pull all right you can get it out that way or you can also again using the same process of clipping onto the bottom, making sure that it's underneath there and it's grabbed, grabbing, and then grab it on the top, make sure you have purchase and you can start rocking back and forth until you it comes out nice and after like two to four rocks depending. So again you can do this straight up in one fell shoot and it's gonna have to be a nice yank all at once, but you gotta make sure that you're well uh, purchased onto the switch and you can do the rocking which takes it out as well all right so go ahead and take out these stabilizers we're obviously going to tune these up and I probably uh, will plumber mod them as well and band-aid mod them so um, a lot of you out there that are working on keyboards, I would imagine, probably have one of these, whether it's the WoW stick or this one, which is just precise electric screw screwdriver. I got this uh, a little over two years ago, I think, when they started coming out again. And I mean, it's got nice, not a decent battery. I've never really run out. I only plug it in maybe once a month and leave it overnight, but it charges over USB-C. And though it doesn't have torque settings or anything like that, it's, it's worked well for me, but it's starting to show its age. It's definitely got a lot of damage. Um, and it did not come with a case. I had to 3D print one. But not too long ago, uh, actually right before the uh, Chinese New Year, uh, somebody reached out to me, a representative from Hoto, and they're like, hey, would you like to take a look, you know, at our driver uh, now I have seen this before or at least this brand when shopping because I actually had been shopping for a newer one or just you know kind of browsing so I was like hey yeah I'll go ahead and take a look at it and uh, you know see what I think basically give a review in actual use so I'm gonna go ahead and use it today so I apologize for the <laughs> product placement they didn't pay me they just sent it to me for free so um, its tools I'll definitely you know use them and I will report if they if it's worth it or not this is the Hoto model K QWLSD010 and I think they sent me a link to it so I'll include that um, So, we've 
got a USB to USB C charging cable. And honestly, I'm kind of glad they didn't include a charger because I already got, oh no, it's USB A to USB C, my, my mistake. Um, I've got so many of them I don't need anymore. So I don't know why I always end up with more chargers than I do devices, but I'm guessing it's the yearly, shell, yearly cell phone shuffle. Oh, wow, this is pretty nice. Some of the bits. Oh, the bits are magnetized. Nice. And there's, is that the magnetizing area? No. There's a the magnetizing area. So, I gotta say, the fact that they're in there, magnet, ooh, and the grip, it's, um, it doesn't have the flashlight, but I hardly ever used the flashlight. It feels substantial, but it's probably because of the magnets. I was wondering if it had like a charging port and it was wirelessly charged, but no, it's got the port on the back. I think this one might be a good size. Now, we're dealing with some soft screws going into plastic in this situation, so we want to try to be as easy and careful with this. So, let me see. Let me use this lid for the screws. And let's go ahead and unscrew this. I like it. I got to say, it's it's kind of, it's nice. It's not quite as bulky or heavy as this one. And it's, um, this one I think, this one I think is over torqued. This one I think is perfect. When you're dealing with a smaller one, I mean, if I want to do something, I need a lot of power. I'll just get out my actual drill, <laughs> um, my brushless. All right. Am I missing a screw? I always tend to forget a single. Yep, I did. I knew it. That's why I was like, I think there's one more. Uh, in this situation, I like to reach for the sputter, kind of get it in between here and here. Let's see what I can get. All right, now, now we're cooking with Crisco. Oh, don't shut it back up. All right. Let's follow along and do the bottom. Oh, hey, one more screw. I knew this one was full of screws, but it's been a while since I modded it, so that's why I'm being a little careful. All right, so now we see that the top cover is also the plate. Uh, we don't hit, really have that much room here, but we'll be able to do a little something. And then we have the PCB. Oh. Yeah, see this one has a revision date of 2019. <laughs> so uh, they're just getting getting rid of old inventory. All right, now let's go ahead and just unplug the JST cable. All right, so we got that out. So we have the PCB, as you can see. You can probably tell from, I know they're, they're not staples, but yeah, they're actual connectors. This is a poorly manufactured, or not poorly, just cheaply manufactured, let's say that. Um, that's why it's available for so cheap. Uh, and it also looks like the PCB can be used for ISO as well. Obviously, we need a different plate and everything, but they probably have a PC, um, an ISO version out there. But nonetheless, this is a, like I said, it's, it's cheaply manufactured, but it's not awful. We've got our side LEDs, which shine through here. So let's see what we can do. We got a lot of studs here, um, but we've got to stay basically below these little ribs that are coming out, or support support ribs, I guess, for the stud. So, what materials should we try? All right, I'm thinking of trying these. This is sticky cork pads, but. Uh, cork is a good uh, natural insulator, so that's what came into my head one day, and I was thinking, what if we did this? Now, I don't know if it's going to be easier to just cut around. Now, I know these aren't the O-rings regularly used. These are stem O-rings, but maybe we'll add a little bit of softness to it. 
I don't know, just giving it a shot. I don't think it can hurt. All right, so let's see what that feels like. Oh, wow. Yeah, it actually does provide a bit of flex. Now, if I wanted to cut some studs out, which ones would I do? Let's see how easily this puncture is. All right, puncture's pretty easy. So this might just be the thing. All right, so I think I got enough cork down here. So yeah, these are just cork tiles. Um, I got them on Amazon. 36 pieces self-adhesive cork sheet, sheet adhesive backed by Bliss Time. All right, um, I think they were $8 for this pack on Amazon. So uh, I'm trying to remember, because I know I did a lot of searches, but I don't think I've seen uh, a mod done with this before. I do know that um, cork can be used as your as a natural um, sound absorber or, or um, dampening when you're doing a studio. So, and I don't know the science, the material sciences behind that, but I'm going to guess it's because it's dense; it captures higher tones. So, right now I'm just pushing the cork to where it. Is nicely around the base so that we get enough room because we even though these are pretty tall we don't really only got down to where the supporting ribs are on the side and I'm almost tempted on some of these to just cut around but I think we'll be okay this one might need a little cut cut so that it has the room to go around snip snip Now we can see the supporting ribs. And obviously I like to I prefer to use a plastic spudger in here because metal could break stuff. And I was gonna remove some of the studs, but being the size of the PCB and everything, I just don't think it's the best of ideas. I think it could introduce a little too much flex. And I don't even know who this keyboard's going to. So realizing this is going to somebody that I don't know, I'm going to leave my, I don't have a business card, but my calling card down here. So, all right, I think that's going to be good for right now. Like I said, I'm not going to port it. I do have on schedule to do a porting so that I can show folks how easy it is. Um, and I'm going to do it on the outside because uh, a lot of times it's hard to get that inside. It's not, there's usually not enough space for that USB daughter board, but I'll see what we're going to do when we come to it. So we're going to, I'm going to be doing a porting video for those of you who have asked, uh, because it's a fairly simple process and doing it on one keyboard will pretty much show you how to do it. But I have a, uh, I can't remember, it's a Razor, a Black Widow, a keyboard that I don't usually, I don't think I've tried before, but I got sent to me by um, somebody on the sub. They're like, yo, hey, here, you have an, I've got a few of these. Let me send you one. So they sent me one and I've got it in the, um, in the queue. Oh, wait a minute. These do have to, I'm not done with this yet. Let me fi finish this. All right. So we got those O-rings. I think I got them over all the studs. Oh, wait a minute. There's one. That's why I had an extra one. All right. So Make sure they stay down there. And let's set you to the side for now. 
now we turn our attention to the PCB. And first thing is first, let's get some tape. Let's go with the red since we're doing black and red color. Oh. Um, a lot of questions about uh, which tape to use. The only tape that I consider using is the type of masking tape. It can be called painter's tape, it can be called masking tape, it can be called crafter's tape, but it's made out of paper mache and leaves no adhesive resi residue if you've had it on there for an hour, if you had it on there for months. So this is the only tape that I recommend. Um, and your tape isn't conductive. It's actually considered a con um, an insulator. So it's not going to cause fire. And yes, it will catch fire if something else, you know, is burning in like your battery. But there are new tapes, like a scotch tape, and I did a video uh, when I was doing the keyboard, it literally shorted my entire USB hub out. So, um, and it was, I, I thought it would be fine, but I was completely wrong. So now this tape is a little thin, so we're going to have to make a few strips here, but I think we'll be okay. Now, obviously I want to keep an eye for these LEDs. I don't want to cover them up. And I'm going to see how many layers I can do. I like to punch out the holes between every layer. Um, it makes it easier to trim if they need to need to be trimmed before installing on the plate. Um, I guess it's a it's not necessary, but it's just easier. Uh, and I've got to say, the spudger has been my u most used tool while doing keyboards. It helps in so many things to open up the case or to punch out holes and numerous other things, like especially if you're testing something on the PCB, you don't have to worry about this shorting it out if you happen to be working on it while it's plugged in. So let's go ahead and do another layer. All right, I think the two layers of tape is going to do in this situation, but let's just uh, double check and make sure. I think we're okay, but we may have to replace the... Um, or remove the O-rings because I don't think it's the tape that's preventing it from going down. I just think it's the bounce of the O-rings. And I mean, this does go down, so we should be. All right, yeah. Yeah, I think we're good. All right, so next up, oh, look at that, it's almost perfect. Just need to trim a bit off the top. All right, this isn't going to do much, I don't think, but it might help because I don't have much space left 
So I'm going to try using these, see if they work around the key switch. Yeah, it's not adding much as far as um, space, so it should be okay. All right, there we go. We got a few edges that kind of overlap, but that won't be a problem. Uh, these are actually meant for top side to mute it more. I like it when there's not enough room. I do have them, and these these are a half a millimeter thick, and do have them up to three millimeter thick. And in my opinion, it it dampens and deepens the noise just you know somewhat. It's always in in my opinion, I've always found that plate PCB foam is just positive so what else can we do to this plate uh, well we can clean it off Got a bunch of little pieces of tape from the PCB what I've got here is some nail polish remover but this is um this does not have acetone this is acetone free yeah acetone free formula uh, if you use the acetone it will melt your keyboard but with this acetone free, you can get a little bit on a piece of cotton or a paper towel. And usually you want to try it first, one spot, but I've done these before, so I know that it works. On some of them, they're a little bit tougher, and you kind of just have to use whatever material kind of... Think of it as sandpaper, though. It's just really getting the, uh, the layers of paint off. does take away a little bit of the black paint as well I like to just do it a little bit around that area just softly so it blends in once we dry it up and clean it yeah, the stuff evaporates quite quickly so you may need to like on these some they come off like royal clutch comes off super quick and easy to clean out any remnants of the acetone. All right, I think the plate is ready. Now, what we gotta do, ah, the stabilizers. Yes, yes, the stabilizers. I've done these use use stabs so many times, I kinda feel like I know what, I'm, what to expect. All right, so now that we have the wires wrapped up in some plumber's tape, I'm going to go ahead and pull out our grease. Now, the, the grease I use is basically, it's meant for springs, but can be used on wires just fine. It's a, uh, you could call it a homemade mix. But a friend of mine made it and sent it to me. What we're going to do here, I already know there's a little bit of oil. I don't think they put grease in here. I think they just put some oil in here. So I think we're going to be good as far as lubrication of the uh, actual housing. So I'm just going to dip the wire in, go past the elbow a little bit, and then try to wipe off any excess. We don't need too, too much. And we got some past the elbow there because that's where it's going to be clipping in. All right, then we oh, make sure we have this straight and lined up. Go into the hole and 
nice and smooth. Again, dip it in the grease. And you, uh, if you uh, want a cheap alternative, I like super lube grease. I think it works perfect for what we're doing. Um, but of course, you know, that, that's always left up to preference. I don't use Krytox or oh, backwards. Or any of those because I think they're overpriced and just not necessary for what we're doing. All right, yeah, that feels pretty smooth. So let's go ahead and move on. All right, so I got the stabilizers done. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of tape on the spots where they're going to clip into. This way, we'll make sure that they're as tight on the plate as possible. So we go to the where the stabilizers go in, we're looking for the flat part. And we put the tape here and wrap it in the side. Basically, we just want to, this is the spot where it clips. So we want it to get on there as tight as possible. And that's what this tape will add a little bit. It'll close the tolerance differences, basically. Really should have cleaned off the grease from my hands it got on the tape. But I think. This will be good, so we slide in the bar first that goes underneath, and then we push down. Make sure that these lock uh, clips are pushed down, and now, let's see. Plate definitely doesn't go anywhere. But the stabs move nice and smooth, so looks like that is a success. Let's go ahead and get the rest of them done. All right. Got the stabilizers, they're in, are looking good. So now it's time to close her up and see about uh, changing out the switches. As I said, I'm going to stick with the same keycap set, but I'm hoping that the switches will make up for that. Now, before we close everything up, obviously, it'd be a good idea to plug in the daughter board here. All right, so we'll go ahead and lay this back over. So the screws are going to have to punch through this, but it should be fine. Now, that moment of truth. Yeah, if we can get it to snap back together, I think it'll be good. It's tight. But I don't think it's too tight. Yeah, it's going in as long as it's staying in with the clips. Now let's go ahead and screw it closed. And we're back to the um, hotel. Now for switches, I'm going to go with some. Now this is a thin weather stripping adhesive back. But I'm just going to cut some pieces here to kind of just fill in that hollowness. All right. Now for switches, I think I'm going to go with some Aqua sponge that I have that I already lewd. And um, I'm using a Kitco container by Pulling Keys. I've been, I've been prototyping them for a minute. And I really, I got to say, I love that it has a socket where you can put a switch. So if you just want it real quick. All right, that's what it sounds like. You've got it. Um, it also has, a, this is a, a dry erase label. So, um, and you get the three packs, which I, I buy quite often. It comes with a um, dry erase marker, which I have one around here somewhere. I just can't seem to find it at the moment. Well, that's par for the course. Anyway, um, it also has a gauge. So you can um, basically, where the lowest level is, you try to match it up to this line, and you'll see like this one. I know I have probably, yeah, 90. I've got uh, two, two sets of 45. So uh, this is helping me to organize and make the space that I need, um, especially for the new studio. So um, they they sent me some free samples, but now I've I've been purchasing them because I need a lot of them, and I, I really I really do enjoy them. They're they're pretty cool. Those other ones were uh, 
the standard size and they also have large sizes which will take I mean this is an entire 178 key keycap set and it's got the dry erase label and you can also store your cables so you know, I've been using it and soon enough I'm gonna have really really organized being able to just look at the label and see what you got or just see I mean sometimes I don't even need to look at the label you can just see and know okay that's that we got these sponges Now, I'm using the Akko sponge because we've got the Otemu hot swap socket, and this has the skinny legs. Yep, so this should have no issue going in. So we have the switches loaded up now. We've got uh, the Akko sponge. These are pre-lubed. Uh, this is before I started only donut dipping, so they're fully lubed. I think they're going to sound pretty good with the key cap, so I'm going to go ahead and pop those on. I'm going to take some of this two-sided jelly tape and fill in the space bar a bit give it a little bit of uh, filling So here we are with my modded EU suit K620. I was aiming for a little bit more clack because people are either going to like somewhere that's silent to something that's clicky. And I felt that the sponge being a pretty snappy tactile because the dual stay spring and the cheaper caps would lend better to a clack. Ako, Ako switches for the most part. Um, especially with clear tops, just tend to be a more clacky. Um, not that that's a bad thing, that's just what I found. So I um, I think I, I, I achieved it. I don't think it's perfect. I was under a little bit of a rush, and I took breaks to do other stuff. So And the stabilizer just was giving me a pain. I also added some jelly tape uh, into the space bar so that it sounds not as hollow. Because these are thinner keycaps so um, if you follow along I did the cork uh, which I mean adds a little bit of weight to it and takes away the hollowness and the slightest of ping um, these are lubed If I had another day with it, if I had known, I mean, I like I said, I should have, I should have just guessed when she said, you know, I need a keyboard, and I should have just done it right away. Um, but hopefully, whoever gets it likes it. Like I said, it's not perfect, but um, it's. I think, in my opinion, it sounds better than what it sounded like stock, uh, significantly so, to where someone could notice. Does it sound like this one? No. But uh, I took probably twice as long on that one. Uh, oh, no, about three times as long because I also ported it. So uh, there's a, a lot more time that went into that one. I'm hoping that whoever gets this might enjoy it. And who knows? They might jump into the, uh, into the, uh... so who knows? Someone might get it and might actually jump into the hobby because... Uh, this was their the first free hit. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to leave you guys with a stock sound test and then afterwards a sound test of it after modding. Um, basically, we just did the tape mod, PE foam mod, um, tuned the stabilizers, and put cork inside of the case to fill up. We also well, put the, um, the bigger O-rings, the ones that are meant for Keystem, and we put them right above right on top of the stud so there's actually I mean it's not flex it just it gives a little bit so nothing amazing mind you but the case is shut and everything is good so so yeah so I'm gonna leave you guys with a stock sound test uh, 
let me know what you guys think in the comments below i've got this was just like i said this was a hurried one i was like well i might as well film it since i gotta do it and it's gotta be ready by tomorrow morning so it's late monday night she needs it for school tomorrow i've been jumping back and forth on other stuff but i got this one done so until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on